This week's episode is brought to you by Uncle Jared's Root Cream. We've all been there. The only thing on your mind is the bad root you had this morning, and you're in charge of picking up your kid's birthday cake for the party at 2 p.m. You stumbled on a nasty root last night, and you have to speak at your grandma's funeral first thing this morning. The interviewer just asked you if you could determine the root cause of why you're looking for a new job and your mind is blank except for your unfortunate roots. Don't let bad roots throw off your game. Grab some of Uncle Jared's root cream, apply it liberally at the source, and massage until everything looks and feels normal again. You'll feel a release from all of your problems. You'll feel so good you won't care that this cream is 100% synthetic. Most companies would hide that fact, but not Uncle Jared. We tested the shit out of this cream on real animals before we decided it was safe enough for you. So get ready to give yourself a rootin' tootin' good time and head over to ujcream.com today and enter MindGap at checkout to get a free VHS copy of the award-winning movie Roots. It's like a really good movie. This week's episode is brought to you by Elfin & Castle, located at 185 North Wabash and 111 West Adams in Chicago, Illinois. Look, I know you're looking for that perfect English pub experience so you can grab some incredible drinks and tasty food. Elfin and Castle has you covered. They have excellent daily drink specials, happy hour Monday through Friday from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m., and some delicious ass food for you to chew on while you watch some fucking sports. Come on down to Elfin and Castle at 185 North Wabash or 111 West Adams in Chicago, Illinois, and tell them that Mind Gap Podcast sent you. Well, howdy ho there, you little scamps. On this week's episode, Justin and I have a little chitty chat about whether the Zack Snyder cut of Justice League would be worth watching before I give my thoughts on whether the subscription to Disney Plus is worth it. Then we talk about the TV shows and movies we've seen that have had great endings. We had a wonderful discussion from the Twitch chat on this episode. If you want to join in on the next MindGap podcast recording adventure, then head over to twitch.tv slash mindgappodcast on Tuesdays at 6.30 p.m. Central Time and watch the sausage get made, baby. That being said, it's time to put on your nostalgia cap, think about all the times when you were a happier person, and get ready to give a grand old hug to episode 222 of Mind Gap Podcast. Mind Gap Podcast. started that and it was like it's it was started start, the process it was started man yeah man it was started man it was started man man holy holy man man oh man oh man <laughs> oh man man oh man <laughs> this is gonna be it guys for the entire this is it it's been a weird week guys oh man it's been a weird week man yeah man it's been oh, a weird no, we a weird ass week. Uh, welcome to these uh, chats, <laughs> man. Man, <laughs> welcome to the chat, man. How come it's not like in dark mode, you piece of shit? I don't know. It's my iPad. I love, I love dark mode. Dark mode's cool, man. That's like the <laughs> the best thing. Out. Everything I, I was like, oh, I love a dark background with white letters. Yep. It sounds good to me. Yeah. I yeah. mean, that it, aesthetically, it's pleasing. It's easy on the eyes, man. It is easy on the eyes. I will say that. I thought I legitimately thought I had this in dark mode, and apparently I don't. No. Nope. Or during the last update, it updated to non-dark mode. Mm. What's that tell you about that system? Racist. Yep. We got it. We got it. Apple. Get at us. <laughs> Apple. Period. Uh, Racist. Right. No. Period. <laughs> no, we would we would love them as a sponsor. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what that would be like. We probably couldn't talk about five pounds of hamburger. We if, probably could. I don't. Would they Apple's care. a sponsor? I don't think they would matter that I much. I bet you. I bet you who it was. It was an Apple exec. I bet you who wouldn't do it like it is like McDonald's. Oh yeah, no, very much not. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they would. I don't know. This episode of uh, Mind Gap brought to you by McDonald's. Uh, when's the last time you had five pounds of hamburger shoved up your ass? Listen, first of all, McDonald's, uh, they wouldn't do that because they're going to cook their meat first. Sure. They wouldn't dare deliver you old E. coli wrapped in a nice 
sesame seed bun with some special sauce and two lettuce patties. Is that how it works? Where's that know. special sauce come from? Yeah, Am right. I right? The anus. So <laughs> <laughs> always Hard fresh. Stop. Always fresh, never frozen. <laughs> the anus. The anus. Always fresh, never frozen. Um, I uh, I actually did. I I just remembered. I want. There's something I wanted to ask you about. Um, and I think we've talked about it prior. But now that there's a microphone right here, did you know that? <laughs> Doug, Doug, for those of you We're not recording? watching on Twitch, Doug legitimately just got surprised at the fact that there was a microphone in front of his face. Uh, what I was trying to do is, ever since uh, we had uh, Steve uh, Leishman and Chris Miller on here from the uh, the last uh, the last the, the Review Universe podcast, and I realized that I had the microphone on backwards, uh-huh. and I was like, wow. Ever since then, I've been paranoid that I haven't done it right. So I was like, is this on right? Well, I don't. <laughs> after the fact, after just, we hit record. After we hit record and we yeah. were already doing it. Yeah. Just so you know, uh, because it says the word I know back what it here, says. I always check for you. I know. So I know it's, and yeah. I know that's the way to put it on. Oh, no, still, I know I you know like, that now. But <laughs> also, I was like, is it straight? Is it coming straight at me or is it off to the side? I don't know. Anyway, you're going to ask me something. It was. But yes. we can just do this. No, yeah. it's not good. Um, I wanted to, we've talked about it prior, but I, now that there is momentum behind it, uh, hashtag release the Snyder Cut. Hashtag who cares? Seriously, still. I just don't care, man. Really? How was his cut going to make that thing any better? Because it's the director's cut. Mm-hmm. It's his cut and he was the director. Mm-hmm. That's how it works. I mean, that's I, the definition of that. You familiar with the movie American Gangster, starring Denzel Washington and Russell Crowe? I am. Um, I bought the director's cut version of that, not knowing that it didn't come with the regular theatrical cut, and I'm very fucking pissed about it. Oh, really? Yeah, the ending fucking blows it on it now. Just the director's cut. Just the director's cut. That seems odd to me that they would even do that. Oh, so annoying. Are they trying to pull like a Blade Runner? The thing? The ending of that movie is perfect. Like, I don't know if you've. I've remember never seen it. it. I've, oh, you haven't? No. Oh man, it's like one of my favorite. Like, I don't it know. It looked to, intriguing. To I don't me. know what to watch right now. I put it on. I just, I just enjoy the okay. shit out of it. All right. Essentially, it's it's about Denzel's Washington, specifically him, his his story. No, he's playing a character named Frank Lucas, and uh, he's a black man in like the seventies who actually it's based on a true story of a guy who essentially goes to overpower like all the Italian mobs and organized crime because he goes straight to Vietnam during the okay. Vietnam War, buys the heroin directly from there, takes it back to the US and he basically floods the market with like a hundred percent pure heroin. Really? And just he basically has everyone buy the balls and it's telling that story. And is this based off a, a true story? It's based on a true story. I don't wow. know how much of it is true, but and Russell Crowe plays uh, the basically the task force that okay. is trying to, yeah, yeah. to bring him down. The best part about the movie, I'm going to spoil it for you. Please, Hope that's okay. Please do. Um, is at the end of the movie, uh, Frank gets caught, and as no. as he's like, you know, at the end, he he goes to jail for a while. But interestingly enough, Russell Crowe was uh, also learning to be a lawyer, and Frank Lucas is the first person that he defends, and so. Frank Lucas turns Wait, what? turns state's evidence over. This so is the director's gets, cut. No, this is oh. the regular cut. But what happens is it's one of the coolest shots in the movie is at the very end is Frank Lucas is in there for like, I don't know, 15 years. So he goes in, it's like the 70s. When he comes out, it's the early 90s. Okay. And he's coming out of prison and this like, this uh, aluminum like gate just is rolling up and it's in the middle of like New York. And he comes out and you just hear like 90s rap music playing. It's completely different like from he's everything. Like war, yeah. He comes out and he looks like really sinister, but you can also tell he's he doesn't know what's going on. And it sure. just it's just a slow uh fade in and public enemy is playing in the background. It just, <clears throat> just slowly fades in on him and then it cuts to black. I was like, that's such a perfect ending. The director's cut, it keeps going. It's oh, you like, see hit you see the next thing he does? Oh yeah, it's like uh fucking Russell Crowe meets up with them. He's like, Hey buddy, how's it going? And they walk through the park and there's just, it's just it has such a weird ending after that. And I was like I was like, Fuck, man. Who who did that? Movie? Uh I think it was Tony Scott or Ridley Scott. It was one of the two. Okay, one of the Scott brothers. Yeah. And I was like, God damn it, man. So yeah. that I don't need Zack Snyder's cut. Well, I don't know what he's gonna provide well, that's Kevin, gonna make that any better. Kevin Smith said that he saw it and yeah. that he said it was, you know, while it was uh He's like it's definitely it's it's different. It's not a complete film. Yeah. And he said and he said that not not as a 
All right. This is a, it's a rowdy time. I don't know if that's really going to pick up on here. There's a lot of times where I feel like yeah. there's noise that doesn't really get picked up. So <laughs> A rowdy time in the ENC lounge. That's right. Um, Over by the poop poop houses. That's right. <laughs> the old, ye old poop houses. The pooping housen. The pooping housen. Yeah. So is a Hamburg, is. Yeah. Um, no, he said, uh, again, not in like a uh, disparaging way at all, but he's like, it's just, it's not complete. Like, he, of course, Snyder had to leave, you know, before the movie was done, so it is not a complete film, but that's not to say that he could not put some money and time behind it, and I mean, I'm assuming he had most of his shots. He probably just needs to, and he, most of it could probably be finished with VFX now. I just don't understand. You cast James Dean. The need, pff, yeah, right. I just don't understand the, the, the need and desire to see this. Like, I, just, is there a general yeah. thought that it's going to be yes. better? Absolutely. Well, I, uh, okay. Now, apparently, Momoa saw it, and he's like, it is fucking rock your balls off. Okay. Godot. He's like, my man. <laughs> my man. Uh, Godot saw it. I, I, I'm assuming they, and Affleck, because they're now jumping into the fray. And then uh, the guy who played Cyborg, which really, who gives a shit about that character? But all of them, it was, it was, a, the, the big thing was it was a fan, it was a fan push for a long time. And it was speculated that, that this thing exists. Maybe it exists. I don't know. Does it? I don't know. And so everyone's like, release it. It has to exist. Release it. But now there's like legitimacy, like Kevin Smith and Momo and all the stars are saying, you know, we've seen it and it needs to get released. And so the, the, uh, my theory is that with these people pressuring, now that you have actual celebrities who the studios want to work with these people again. And so if they're like, you know, they, they might be able to actually get this thing released. And I'm curious to see why they're so, like for me, if, if they've seen it and it's a piece of shit, they probably wouldn't need to get behind it. They wouldn't yeah. feel the need to get behind it. So I'm curious more than anything to see why are they, why are they jumping in now to have this thing released? I just don't. I, I think is it's is it out of solidarity? It's it can't probably just be better than what was released to some degree, but by how much? You know what I mean? Like I, I mean, I, I don't know. I, my reaction to that is I think people are imagining that there's just going to be this version out there that is unrealistically awesome that there's this hidden movie that Warner Brothers just wouldn't release and it's just hiding out there I think it will be marginally better yeah. I don't think it's hard to be worse than what already exists I would be shocked if it was if so it was worse. and again that's also not knocking Joss Whedon who had to pick up right. where you know uh, everything left off and he just had to like the thing uh, was it just tonally Joss Whedon is not the same director as Zack Snyder so like no. you had someone it's like giving it it's like having again it's like having Ridley Scott started off and then having Zach Braff finish it. Yeah. It's just not the same move. It, they're yeah. two different directors. Or Michael Bay started and then one of the Duplos brothers finish it. Yeah. It does not the same movie. It's very different. It's very different directing styles. Um, I, I, The project was definitely doomed. Also, DC just being what they were, who they are, the project was doomed. But I still am just curious. I, I want... I feel like if an actor's going to get behind this, if they're going to throw their weight behind it, there's got to be some reason. I think it's because they're like, hey, guys... I want you to see a better version of what I did. You so, know what I mean? so, but that would then allude to the fact that it's better. I don't think it'd be hard to be better than that. I, 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 I believe <laughs> I that. I believe that wholeheartedly what that whatever Zach has put together, because he and I are close. Yeah, you're on um, first name. It, it's it's probably better than what was there, but by how much? Right. You know, I, I just can't imagine it would be. I think because a lot of people are tied to this, they wanted Justice League to be good. And right. It, it wasn't. Right. I mean, it's. I think that's objective it fact exists that yeah. it just it wasn't a very good movie right. and so i think people just you know <clears throat> i can understand if there was you know, i don't have no any i don't have any dog in the fact because i just didn't like what was going on with that whole whatever they were tr attempting to do with it so i mean i imagine i guess if it was like avengers right and you had a good avengers movie but then maybe age of ultron was dog shit just absolute dog shit, but you knew there was another version out there that's maybe even slightly better you'd yeah. want to see it yeah <clears throat> so like i get it i understand there's a, there's I, yeah. a push for it you know, I'm sure uh, Rob would love would be signing the petition to see it. Um, you know, yeah, Rob. I, I just, for me, I'm like, I don't, I just don't care. I'm, yeah. I'm done with that. I'm curious to see what Robert Pattinson does with sure. it. I love sure. that. I love what they've cast for people. I love that um, Andy Serkis is going to play Alfred. Like, I, I'm, I'm wholeheartedly looking forward to I the next. It was weird that they're going to do a CGI Alfred though. Yeah, he's going to do motion capture. Alfred. I mean, you know, it's what he knows best. Yeah, that's you know? fair. Yeah. Master Bruce, careful. He's just a bat crawling around on yeah. this. <laughs> so weird. He's just Alfred playing is there. a pet bat. That's how he's they're actually changing playing this. James Dean as, as you know, as, as a bat. 
Uh, hey there, kid. I don't hey. know how he sounds. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> See here, copper. <laughs> that's, that's he was talking. alive in the 50s, right? Everyone in the 50s sounded <laughs> the, the, like that? Transatlantic that right? accent? Yeah. Is that how they do it? Um, Fuck you, coppers. Yeah. I, uh, I, 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 if, if, if this does get released, would you be willing to, if not in the theater, you would not pay the money. No, I understand that. I would not go. Would you rent it from iTunes and, and watch it? No, I'd, I mean, if it came out on HBO Go, I'd probably, I'm not paying shit. Okay. You know, I'm already paying for HBO Go. It's got to come as part of the package. If you went over to someone's home and they're like, hey, I've got, I've got the director's cut. You want to watch it? Would you, I, wait, I, would you spend the time? I would need to. Because for you, a time, time is, is a commodity what it is. for you. It's yeah. like, if you and I are going to go hang out, you're like, hey, do you want to watch this movie? I'd be like, no, I want to hang out with you. <laughs> like, I don't want to watch this thing. Aw, thanks. I'd rather watch Tom Segura. Any of his specials, which are out on Netflix right now, check them out. Completely normal, <laughs> mostly stories, and uh, disgraceful. There you go. This uh, podcast is brought to you by Tom Segura. I wish it was. Go <laughs> listen to your mom's house podcast wherever podcasts are sold and thank me later. And thank you later. Yeah. Um, I, I, I do think it's... Uh, I do... <laughs> transitioning into uh, saying Zach. Mm-hmm. Do, why do we feel the need to do full names when it's celebrities? Like because, do you, do you like because I every time you like, I've done that too. I'm like, oh yeah, you know Zach this and this and like you always get called out for it too. Well, I think part oh, what of it you, is you guys having tea now. Part of it is like I think it's the name like Zach or Tom. Like yeah. oh yeah, me and Tom. It's like oh I saw Tom's new special. It's like oh do you know Tom? Right. Do you know? Do you know what it's he's saying? It's so weird. But like, there's people I refer to you that you don't know, right. Either, but I don't call them by their full name, right? But <laughs> but it seems like, oh yeah, but it feels like on a celebrity level, like I have to distinguish that this isn't just an average Tom; it's Tom Segura, you know. And he did a special. It's and, just a weird. It's yeah. something I've never really I thought feel like about it's re- before. It's part of it's like respect in my mind. You think so? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna be like, yeah. So Zach. So if you met them on the street. How would you like would, Zack Snyder? Right. Would you be like, oh, Zack Snyder, I love your work, Zack Snyder? Or would you be like, Mr. Snyder? Like, what would you say? Uh, well, you wouldn't talk to him. So let's I mean, put it on I, someone else. I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't shun him, but I'd just be like, oh, hey. You know, I'd You'd be, be like, like, Mr. Snyder, what happened? No, I'd just yeah. be like, cool, man. Yeah. Uh, and then I'd lean in, shake his hand. I'd be like, you're not a visionary. That's a lie. You take what's on paper and in a comic and you just put it up on the screen, which is impressive, but it doesn't make you a visionary. Right. You didn't come up with that all by yourself. But hey, I like what you do. I respect it because I you do something I can't. But first name, last name, or full name? Mr. Zack Snyder. Mr. Oh, you would do Mr. and then the full name. I would do Mr. Wow. Zachary Cornelius Snyder. <laughs> That's not my middle name. It is now. It is now Zachary Whatever. Snyder. <laughs> Mr. Zachary Cornelius Snyder. Yes. ZCS. ZCS. <clears throat> As they call him for short in the prison yard. Mm-hmm. Uh, dull, a dull moment wants to know, uh, he said, the podcast is looking more cinematic today. How does Doug feel about the lens flare coming across, coming in across his microphone today? Oh, is it really coming in? Yeah. Oh, that's unfortunate. You see that? Oh, man. Looks like a J.J. Abrams special. Sorry, guys, for the Star Star Trek uh, <laughs> Sorry, looks like here. a J.J. special. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, thank you. I'm just going to start using first names. There you go. On the show. I'm just going to use first names now. It makes one sense if you're referring to Meryl <clears throat> or Celine. Who? Or, you know, Prince. Or, yeah. You know. Cher. Yeah. Like, use her last name. Sting. Right. You know. Uh, Hague. <laughs> Hague. Yeah, those those are names that stand. They stand al- the test of time. They stand alone. I thought Drew was going to ask when uh, he could come on the podcast, and the answer is any fucking time, pal. In fact, I think that everyone should know that Drew turned down our invitation oh boy. to come on here. Oh boy. Just saying. I, I, I'll we say were going to talk baseball, and he said no. I'll say that we were going to talk Reds baseball, too. Right? Cincinnati Reds. I prepped. I did, too. I prepped. Yeah. Yeah. What, tell me, tell me about what you prepped. I can't now. It's just it, it's too painful. It's but too what painful. I will, what I will say is, I tried to, I tried to pull Drew on. I, my last ditch effort, my hail mary, if you will. Um, the, the dark side wants to know what is Cher's last name. That's a great. That's a great question. I don't know. Is it Cher? Cher? No, it's a. Uh, what's Bono's last name? But Bo- Sonny Bono. There you go. His name. So was, yeah. Cher Bono. I don't think she ever took his last name. She did now. <laughs> she did now. Cher Bono. I tried to tell Drew, you can come on and defend yourself on why you would win in a fight against Dr. Drew Pinsky. There we go. Oh, man. I, did, I he said, think that, did he think he would win? Oh, he was very upset. Really? He was just like, dick size has nothing to do with it. No, but Drew Pinsky's ripped. But congratulations. Yeah. like that's <laughs> That guy's ripped, man. That guy. Uh, that guy's ripped. You don't say. He's ripped? <laughs> ripped is not. Something you use to describe someone's dick. No, but I also we pulled up pictures. He was very fit. 
The guy was cut. Well, yeah. Well, he yeah. was chiseled. He was also circumcised. He was also yes. circumcised. He was very. We cut. could tell from the loose uh, sweatpants he was wearing that he uh, was. Sherilyn Sarkisian. Sarkisian. S a r k i s i a n. Ah, she's Greek. Sherilyn Sarkisian. Mm. Sarkisian of the of the Virginia Sarkisians. That sounds like something you'd hear like a, a, a medieval or like a Roman thing where it's like, the Sarkissians <laughs> are cresting the hill, wearing their scythes, screaming battle cries. The Sarkissians come to steal your children in the night. I think we should write the story about the Sarkissians. Sarkissians! The Sarkissians! Sarkissians. They're like uh, reptiles. You know, monsters. Right. That's what they tell the propaganda. Like, the reptiles. They they only come out in the day because that's when their blood is warmed. Otherwise, it's too cold. They're cold-blooded is what I'm saying. I could see Cher as a reptile person. Mm-hmm. It's not, it does not take a lot to convince me of that. I'm really bummed about the lens flare. I'm sorry. I'm, Are you? As I'm looking at it, I'm like, I'm, fuck. I am so into the fucking lens flare right now. God damn it. We'll put it to a vote. Do we need to adjust the camera? Is this throwing people off? Because uh, it's very much bothering I'll Doug. turn off the lens flare I'm filter. Into it. It's just. I'm into it. It's we're the using. New, we're, it's the new phone. We're using a is. new phone. So that's, sorry guys, my bad. I, I wanted to see what it looked like this week, so. Honestly, I, I'm, I think it's beautiful because it is perfectly like capturing your microphone. Mm. It's wonderful. Uh, anyway, the Sarkissians. The Sarkissians. Um, oh, come on. Sorry, what? I keep, I, people are chatting and I keep losing the stream. Fuck a duck. My bad. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> so I had a, uh, I had a debate with, uh, with Robin Haig. Okay. Um, we were gonna go. Th- uh, we were gonna go in three ways. On uh, yeah. there it is. I was hoping. I was like, I gotta get this out before Doug does it. I did not. Go we were gonna go ways. in three ways on uh, Disney Plus. Nice. Um, Wait, what? You guys were gonna share what? Absolutely. Did, uh-oh. Disney has enough money. First <laughs> off, um, that's how all thieves talk. Oh, they're rich. They don't need this, right? Uh, well, you can have up to three logins. Um, <laughs> Three, I, sorry, I was thinking three Kenny Loggins. Can I have another three Loggins? <laughs> no one needs that many Loggins. <laughs> um, Maka 68, I like the flair. You can never have too much flair. Good. I'm glad someone believes in the flair. Can we get, Jared wants to know, can we get some lens flare off Doug's head? <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's a little intense right now. I will give you that. Well, you know. Um, but 10 million subscribers in the first, what is it, 24 hours, I think they said, right. or something like that? I don't like know that. any of the numbers. It was, it was an insane amount of subscribers they signed up. Um, I opted to not uh, not jump into this because I, I realized I already have far too many subscription services and things I need to watch, and I also have things I'm trying to accomplish, and I don't have time for this. Uh, did I make the right decision or the wrong decision? You made you the right had decision. Some time to sit with it. Like, how's yeah. the Mandalorian? How how are these things? Mandalorian is fantastic. Like, is it worth? Is it worth? Is no. it worth sitting on the well, couch for six hours here, or whatever? It's, they release an episode at a time, and there's like. They average 40 minutes an episode, so... How many episodes are out? Two. Okay. Is it worth sitting for almost two hours? <laughs> um, so I'll, here's what I'll say. When I looked through everything that was on there, I was actually disappointed. Really? Because they're still using the vault shit, so not all of the Disney movies the are out. Get the fuck out of here. So are you serious? So they're only having a few out at a time. They don't have all the Marvel movies on there. I don't think they... They advertised differently, did they not? I don't know. I mean, they, there's a lot on there, but they're like recently released from the vault. So it's not... I mean, I, I can't find Song of the South anywhere, which is horse shit. But, I mean, I'll say this much. It's been great for Natalie. <laughs> Natalie <laughs> <laughs> Didn't see it go in that direction. Briar Fox, Briar Rabbit, I want to know what's happening. It's not often Doug gets to throw me a curveball. That one really, I didn't see it. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll say this much. Uh, it was Natalie had a blast with it. Okay. She's, for some reason, latched onto the movie The Good Dinosaur, which was a nothing movie that kind of fart and Pixar, into the wind. Yeah. And she's just fell in love with it. Yeah. And I'm like, this... So you're telling me that dinosaurs uh, own farms now? Is that what we're doing? I don't understand this movie at all. So a dinosaur s- owns a farm. It starts out with apparently they're like farmers, like brontosauruses are. I'm sorry, brachio. So a brontosaurus is a real, real right, dinosaur. Right. And they're like farming and thing. I'm like, because I caught like the last 25 minutes. She started in the morning and then I came home and I was like, what's happening? <laughs> it's like, all right, cool. There's a little uh, human child, the dinosaur. They have a connection. That's cool. He's saving him from danger, getting him back home. Obviously, a parent dies in it because it's a Disney Pixar movie. Trope, so yeah. something has to happen. And then at the end, he comes back to his farm and like his mom's like pulling corn stalks out of the ground. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> and they have like 
a with house? her mouth? Yeah, they have like. Or a, did, did they give the like, dinosaur a poseable? Oh no, phone. they're like. I'm like, what the fuck? That's gross. Like, no one wants to eat that. There's like a house. I'm like, wait, they live indoors? What the fuck is happening? I don't understand any of this. They flipped the script on you. So I haven't seen the whole thing in sure. its entirety. I've seen it bits and pieces, but she loves it. But she also got to watch um, Tangled, which I only saw the first 15 minutes of. Uh, not really upset about that. Uh, Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast. Um, so she's got to watch what some of the classics. What does she think of some of the old school? I mean, she Is likes she them. Yeah. I mean, she you know she sat through most of Little Mermaid and stuff like that. And you know, Beauty and the Beast, she's kind of enjoyed while doing other things. So yeah. it's kind of nice to be able to you know. But for me personally, I'm like, meh. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I, I know all the Marvel movies. I don't need to rewatch my own most of them. And they don't. So what did you get it for then? Like for um, for her to be able to see old school movies. I mean, or was part it of it was it was like I was Marvel like releases? Mandalorian looked good. I was like, I, there will be more coming. So I'd say initially, I'm not super impressed. Yeah. Um, my favorite tweet about it was Disney Plus isn't good. You were just happier when you were 12. That was one of my favorite tweets I saw. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> well played. Because people yeah. like this. Well, because there's other things too. Like uh, uh, a friend of mine was like, look. Don't judge me, but I love me some Even Stevens. And that's like there's, you know, all those old oh, shows yeah, are yeah. on there. The Sweet uh, Life of Zach and Cody. Yes. Uh, the uh, Hannah Montana's. Sure. Like all that stuff yeah. exists. So there's there's a, as with, as with most, thing, most things with Disney, there's a nostalgia factor. Sure, absolutely. That just grips people. But for me, I'm like Star Wars, Marvel, and, right. you know, that sort of stuff. That's kind of what I'm into. But I'm like, meh. And I will say this. I stand by it. The new DuckTales is fucking fantastic. Yeah. Uh, David Tennant. Uh uh, several that, other that actors. Bennett was on. I think yeah. he played uh, the the big uh, pilot. Y- yes, yeah. there was a dude, former SNL guy, that's on there. Um, I think I don't know if Andy Samberg is on there. There's like very famous voice actors yeah. that are on there. I'm like, holy like you shit! You know these voices. Yeah. I'm like, okay, um, this is and it's hilarious. It's yeah. very funny. So that shows on there. But like, they've got all the classic stuff on there too. Like, I. But again, like, I don't. I think. X Men's gonna be on there, like the the animated show from the '90s. Oh shit! The Simpsons, the entire Simpsons catalog is but on there. That's one of the things that people. Oh, with the the, the aspect, aspect ratio, ratio yeah. which is hilarious. So to Disney me. wanted to Disney wanted, to, and that's one of the things where I was like, "There's been all these all these hiccups," and that was another one was Disney wanted to do uh, to to broadcast these in HD for everyone, so for everyone's enjoyment. But what they didn't realize is when you take it from four by three and punch into to mm-hmm. sixteen by nine. Uh, you're you're cropping a, a fucking metric fuck ton of stuff out of the screen, yeah. And so all the visual gags were just not there. Like there's, well, there's yeah. a picture, like someone posted a picture of like the four by three where there's like this whole scene, and then the sixteen by nine where it's just like a dude's hand next to some duff duff yeah. containers. And oh, that that one was funny because I read uh, cracked had an article. It's like uh, the Simpsons aspect ratio is off. We all better start rioting. They were making fun of the people who were yeah exactly because they're like. And without the aspect ratio, you can't tell that all the Duff beers are the same. Right. They're getting poured because it's cutting off one of them. I'm like, that's a fair thing. But at the same time, I'm like, eh. There's more things to get upset about. Yeah, I know. But, but the thing is, I guess, what with if you're, if you're touting this release this big, this yeah. long, this huge, and you're this, and you're Disney, you should be better than that. Yeah. Again, like, that's the thing that, that always, like, I'm like... For as big as Disney is, is you know, as is, is, you know, big of britches as they wear, like, they really, they fuck up a lot. Well, for me, what I have struggled with is just the connection issues with it are bad. Like, there's a lot of times where the quality will reduce and then it will just freeze. Really? I'm like, what the fuck? Like, this doesn't happen with everything else. Yeah. Um, I was like, look, launch day, pfft. The next is so funny because when everything launched, someone's like, "Did you watch The Mandalorian this morning?" I'm like, "No, man, I had to take my daughter to school." Right? Like, no, I didn't have time. To I got a life, it. nerd. I was like, I can't yeah. do it, and I, you know, end up watching it on the train. Again, I stand by that show. That show's fucking great so yeah. far. Two episodes. I'm like, okay, this is what fucking. And I've heard Star we Wars have not be. yet met Bill Burr. Nope, His not character. yet. Okay, not yet. Can't wait for that to happen. Yeah. Um, but it's cool. It's intriguing. Uh, I like I like a lot about it. It's, it looks great. It sounds great. Like everything, it's it's solid and it's interesting. It's very yeah. interesting. Um, but it just in general, I mean, it's it's basically Disney's play is very obvious. It's like, hey, come in for a real cheap rate. We're going to introduce you. We're going to get you hooked, and then yeah. we're going to slowly rise the price as more sure. things come out and things like that. So I was like, whatever, man. I bought it something. It was like a two year thing. 
it basically came out to be five bucks a month. Right. And since I switched over to Verizon, I also get another year free, so I'm going to get a refund on okay, one of those yeah. things, which I'm like, okay, that's cool, I suppose. But I'm like, whatever, I'll try it out. This will be good for Natalie. She can have some of these things. I can enjoy whatever. I don't have to hunt for all of the Marvel stuff. Like Most of it's there, so I'm like, that's kind of enjoyable to be able yeah. to go through and watch that sort of stuff. So it's fine, but I'd say... You don't need to rush. I mean, I know they're doing introductory offers for yeah, it. It's yeah. kind of like video games. It's like, get the pre, pre-order pre now and get all these bonuses. Yeah. So they basically were like, hey, if you do it now, because I think it also can come with Hulu as well as ESPN Plus. You can, Yeah, you can bundle the three of those since since Disney now owns uh, all yeah. of the stakes in Hulu. Um, you can bundle Hulu Plus, Disney Plus, or yeah, Hulu Plus, Disney Plus, ESPN Plus for twelve ninety nine. Yeah, which is a really good deal. It's not bad I mean, at all. If yeah. you want to get your sports and all that sort <clears> of <throat> plus Hulu, that's not a bad deal at all, man. No, and not at all. But so. but I just again, I just think that for what they were touting this thing to be, it it like because I've heard people like complain like the user interface is terrible. Mm. They don't have a it's recently fine. watched section. Like when you when you mm. when something starts and stops and starts back up again, it starts at the beginning. It doesn't have a you picked up you you left off here. Uh, I feel you know, like that's the not Simpsons true. thing. Um, all the, the I didn't realize the vault like that's horseshit. I yeah. think it should open it up to everything because it said in their. Uh, I guess if you read the fine print, because they say you know, all the Disney movies that eventually, yeah, you know, like that I'm they'll sure let you see yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. Um, and there was something. Oh, all the ha- uh, have you heard about the people people's accounts getting hacked and sold on the dark oh, really? web? No. So now people's, uh, yeah, people's accounts have been, within like three days, people's <laughs> accounts are getting hacked. And it's, since all Disney stuff is tied together, oh, no. their DVC accounts are getting oh, hacked. Oh, man. Uh, for those who don't know, Disney Vacation Club, um, they're, like all their other stuff. So like people who had points and were planning, uh, you know, vacations, all that stuff got oh. hacked. And like there was this big. Uh, I did not hear about s- that. A marketplace on the dark web where people were just snatching this shit Jesus up. Jesus Christ. And all of it's interconnected. So fuck you. Oh, oh man. So like that's a whole other thing is like you don't, they don't have two, two factor authentication, which is becoming now. That's security weird. Security standard. That they don't have that. Like it just seems like a half. For all they were pushing, it seems like such a fucking half-baked idea. Yeah, that seems really weird. Like, multi-factor authentication is just like a standard thing now. Yes, it's so absolutely. funny. Absolutely. And um, at first it pissed me off when they started rolling out the, the multi-factor. And I was just like, I don't, why, don't, why do we need this? And it just it, it's becoming more abundantly more clear to me why we need this now. And I don't mind it anymore either. Yeah. I'm like, that's fine. I'll have an app that verifies it. Everything right. that, because I got a new phone and everything I logged into, it's like, hey, is this really you? Double check. And it's right. like doing all these things. I'm like, I don't mind that at all. Well, the thing is now that I've got, you know, your, your watch, I've got an iPad, a phone, a computer, a TV. So I'm never without a secondary device to authenticate another. Like, exactly. So if I log into an app on my TV and it's like, oh, you've got to authenticate. I've got six apps or six devices yeah. around me, so it it I'm fine with again that it's. it's I'd rather do that. Easier. I'd rather do that than fucking remember passwords for everything. Honestly, sure, I'd rather yeah. do that. It's like or you risk know. losing your shit to ransomware or whatever. Exactly, you know? I'd rather have it that way. Personally, yeah. it's like what are we sacrificing right. in the process? But I'm like whatever. I I remember. I've tried really hard to have unique passwords for everything. Yeah, and it's just been a real struggle. But I know first world problems. I can't remember my password. To my 401k <laughs> account, you know, I need to do a rollover. Um, but yeah, it's one of those things where it's, it's, it's Disney plus is okay right now. Yeah. I wouldn't say I wouldn't, if you have kids, it's worth it. If you don't hang on and just see if there's anything that's really yeah. going to make it worth it. Because if you're into star Wars and Marvel, you've seen it already anyway. Right. But so I it's mean, like, they are yeah. going to have a, a, a massive push for, cause, uh, vision, Scarlet, Witch, mm-hmm. Loki, and, uh, Winter Soldier Falcon, mm-hmm. they're all getting there. And there's a, another... Hawkeye. Um, Hawkeye's getting one, and then David Harbour is going to play someone, I think. Mm. Or Black Widow, right? Mm. Well, that might be a movie. Is that a movie? Yeah, it might then be a movie. he's in that movie then, yeah. But I, I, I can know there's going to be a big push where they got a well, bunch of more shit The thing coming, is that anything that now will be released, like uh, once contracts expire, will immediately be on Disney Plus and only Disney Plus. So sure, future yes. Star Wars stuff, like after it's out of theaters, it's only going to be on Disney Plus. Right. All Marvel stuff, it won't be on Netflix anymore. It'll only be on Disney Plus. So right. if you don't go see it in the theater, that's where it's going to live on streaming and stuff like that. So they're going to take all that. Someone was saying the other day that you know Disney is playing the long game here okay. because what they're what they what they have more so than anything else is really strong intellectual property. And they're banking on that to slowly erode away at other things because things like Netflix has some stuff, but doesn't have the nostalgia factor. Right. 
So <clears throat> right. there's always going to be a draw because you've got Marvel, you've got Star Wars, and you've got all their Disney movies. Like that's like nostalgia and you've got trifecta. Fox, which has and the Fox. Simpsons, which has legacy. Exactly. Yeah. That's also a good point too with everything they own with Fox. So yeah. they have a ton of stuff that they're relying on nostalgia to, right. to pull them through in the long run. Whereas things like Netflix. Netflix has to keep creating stuff. Right. Which, by the way, something I'm really excited for is The Witcher that's coming uh, out on I Netflix. I saw a trailer for that, yeah. Henry Cavill is yeah. uh, playing uh, playing the main character in that, and that looks pretty goddamn good. Is that based on? It's based on a book, <clears throat> and the, there was also a video game. There was a video game. I, yep. I, I was going to say, it sounded familiar. Yeah, and I think it's more based on the books than the video okay. games, but it looks it looks good, and I guess it already got picked up for a season two. Oh, it, it just okay. I think it launches at the end of the month. So I'm curious to check that out. But that's what Netflix has to play. Right. And I was actually just reading an article the other day about how awful it is working at Netflix. Really? Uh, Interesting. One of the things was that when you work there, they have what they call, I forget what they call the sessions. But essentially, if you fuck up, you get to sit in front of a forum of people and they get to tell you how you fucked up. Oh, and sort of as a feedback forum. I like think is like what a they shame session. Basically, yeah, that's like, what they do. Shame, shame. And they're like, hey, you did this and it affected this. It's supposed right. to be like, hey, here's some feedback. And right. it just turns into like a shit show. I've also and heard. Here's how you hurt our department. Yeah, yeah. I've also heard that most shows rarely go into a third season. And if they do, it's it's pretty spectacular because that means bonuses are usually due to creators. And so really? if it's not doing well, they're like, fucking cut it. And they just get it out, so they don't have to pay people out. And also, it's got to be more than successful. It has to generate buzz. Yeah. Like, it can't just be like, yeah, people like it. It's like, it's got to generate a ton of buzz. Otherwise, they're, they're like, looking fucking for the next it. Stranger Things. They're like, like fucking that, yeah. cut it. Right. Fucking cut it. Because otherwise, they're not willing to spend that money on right. it. Right. Exactly. If, like, if it's not, basically, if it's not, if it doesn't get mentioned in the Emmy conversations, yeah, like, then you're. Don't right. bother. Exactly. You'll go two seasons and you're done. Well, I think, and that's, that's one of the other things about Netflix that I love. I love some of the stuff they put out, but there are. I think SNL did a great parody. Did you see that mm -mm. parody where they, it was it was a commercial for Netflix and it was about how they were like, you know, we create more content than you. Like basically they're like, we're trying to achieve the singularity where by the time you get done with the loop, you're back at the beginning and there's more content and you keep going. And like, it was that the commercial kept getting faster and faster. Yeah. And, but it is like, I go on to, and thank God they've changed their, they've updated their UI because you never used to, it used to be impossible to find their, the Netflix original category now oh, that's on the all Apple it is TV. yeah and that that is all it is now but they have i mean it's a dizzying amount of original content and one might argue that while hulu has a much more conservative roster they really they they, they really take the time to kind of vet what they're doing and like the handmaid's tale brilliant the limited series the looming tower that was on hulu wonderfully done um i think they got the man of the is Man in the Castle? Man in the High Castle. Yeah, that's... So, again, like, these... They, they really take their time. Was that Amazon? No, man... It mm, yeah, might be Amazon. Man, yeah, it's Amazon. Yeah. Because um, I've, I've seen some episodes of that, so I don't have Hulu, so... But it, but but the point being... Um, oh, A.D. Bryant has one that's on there. That was... that was it, Well, it was my favorite. It was very well done. So, I think they take their time and try to put out quality while Netflix is like, let's throw billions at this this year and do as much as we can. Yeah. And I just... I don't... It's hard. It's hard to find. I think they almost are falling into the YouTube pitfall, where how does the good shit rise to the top? Because there's so much to to bury it. Yeah, I think they're going with not necessarily quantity over quality because there's good stuff. A lot of there's a ton of good stuff. Ton of good yeah. stuff on there. But I think what they're trying to do is they're trying to be like, look, guys, you're gonna want to have Netflix because there's just so much shit. Right. There's so much you won't need anything else because everything's gonna be here. You just just hang out here because because yeah. there's a sea, a vast sea right, of right. content. Whereas you know, I would say you know HBO is still strong, but I mean people probably come and go. Oh, They'll for probably sure. Like, yeah, I'll come back and they're HBO's desperately trying to find <clears throat> that next thing to fill the Game of Thrones gap. Oh yeah, because yeah, they've yeah. had those large shows like The Sopranos and things like that, and when they've been successful, and they're like, fuck, we got to find something right. else. Like if uh, you look at the stuff they have, the previews they've been like The yeah. Watchmen and some of the stuff they've got coming in 2020 is. Yeah. That you can tell they're like, okay, one of these has to hit. Yeah, yeah. I have I've heard okay things about Watchmen. Nothing really powerful. I, I haven't watched. it I want to watch it, but I also I'm like, yeah, I'll wait till it's ready to go and yeah, I can just yeah. watch all of it. Yeah. But it's it's one of those things where you know they passed on several of the the Game of Thrones prequels because they're like, nah, and it's like, wait, what? And they're actually going to do one of them, I think. 
Who picked up the other ones? Have they I, been picked up yet? I don't think so. I don't think I don't think anyone's going to pick them up. Very interesting. It was like there was one with Naomi Watts and everything like that. That just they Jesus. were like they were like nope. They they did the whole pilot and everything. They're like nope, pass. HBO didn't they? What they just didn't want to tread old ground. Or something? I don't know, but for what? It, pe- pe- wow, man. I, that's the thing that I saw. People like HBO passes on another one. Like another one's not getting made. They're like, what the fuck? That's crazy. Well, the fact that they had so many different prequels they were going to tell is crazy to me. That is crazy too. Yeah, I was like what the fuck? Well, it's very similar to the, I look at the, the same way The Walking Dead Ugh. is doing that whole thing where they're going to do now uh, AMC movies yeah. where it's Walking Dead, like, and it's going to feature Rick Grimes and Andrew Lincoln's coming back to play in a hour and a half long feature film essentially Man, if anyone could run that into the ground it'd be AMC absolutely just, yeah. oh god I, oh you'll be happy to know that I finally hit the point did I tell you this I think you did a little while ago didn't <clears> you <throat> it was about, about a week or two ago oh really about two weeks ago I think where I was watching it I finally just went ah, I don't care Yeah. it was mid show and I just I, someone was talking in a very low gravelly voice and I went nah I'm done Yeah. Uh, it's just that's the problem is it, it's so hard to keep that going yeah what made it special ran its course. Yeah, really and quick. that's the thing. I realized, and I think you brought this up, but I realized I'm like, I like a story that ends. It doesn't have to end like in a pretty bow, but I like it to. I like it to wrap up. I like a conclusion. What's, like there's no, there's no conclusion here. It's just going to keep. Th- th- you never win in this world, so like you never restore electricity's back on. You know, oh, we got a government. Our declarations, but like you never get there, or it's hundreds of years. How do you tell that? Yeah. You know? And, I, and that's, yeah. I think this overall thing is the walking dead are the people that are alive. You know, that's what it is. They're never going to come back to right. reality. What's a show or a movie where you were really satisfied with the ending? A show or a movie that I'm very satisfied with Where you're with like, the damn, oh, that, was, that, was some, that was some shit right there. Uh, oh, man, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what movie, at the ending of it, I thought made a lot of sense and I loved. And anyone who disagrees is wrong. Oh, boy. Uh, American History X. Oh, I love that. I'm just saying. I was like, Hang. I was like, I was like, this one's gonna come at me. I was like, oh no, I love no, no, that I'm movie. coming to hang on. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Um, yeah, that one was extremely he powerful. It up today again, so. Yeah, it's a great, um, great film. No, I uh, that's a that's a really good question. Show or movie that I know I watched. I feel like I watched one recently that ended, and I was like, I'm very surprised at how much I like this, and I'm just I'm fucking blanking on it. I know it was not <laughs> Game of Thrones. Yeah. Um, but it was, I feel like it was more like in the epic realm like that. And I just can't fucking remember now. Right off the top of my head, uh, The Prestige. That was, a, yeah, that, that one, one ended. One, that made you, it, you were on the edge like, what, what, what? Yeah, yeah, that that whole movie is just fantastic. It and, was a very unique way of telling a story. And I was like, oh, shit. That, yeah. that was a very great yeah, it was a very, I watched that recently and I was like, god damn, it's a good movie. I, I've brought this up before, but Fleabag. The yeah, way that they, that. the way that they ended season two, and I really hope that she doesn't go back to it. Not that she yeah. couldn't, like, because she's a brilliant writer. But I, the way they ended, I was just like, oh, that's such a, a beautifully British way to end it. Like, it's <laughs> it's so it just it worked, and I'm like, oh, that's yeah. kind of cool. It left you a little for longing. Like you're like, oh, all right, I, it hurts a little bit, but okay. Yeah. You know, like it was it was interesting. Yeah. So yeah, that one I thought was ended really well. Um, and I know there's I know there's. There have there have been this, plenty of movies. This where, is one of those things where like you ask it and you're on the spot and you're like, "Fuck, I don't know." I can't think of one it's movie. Like, Name your top three movies. And it's like ah, right. it's, it's hard to think of. Uh, Far easier to tell the movie this, to say them. Oh, well, Good Will Hunting. Oh, that's a fun one. too. I loved how that one ended. That's a great. That's a good. Again, that that one it hurts a little. Yeah. But you're like okay, like this guy's stuff's happening. I just love that line. He's like. Son of a bitch stole my life. Right. You know, like, it's what a great... It's great. And then it just, the long shot yeah. of the car just driving off. Yeah. So it's like, good. Such a great story unto itself, anyway. And, and Robin Williams just being fantastic <laughs> in it. What do we got? Uh, don't, uh, so, uh, uh, Jared says, I'll subscribe to Disney Plus when they put the Mighty Ducks animated series on there. Didn't know that was the thing. Oh, okay. Uh, must be Australian. <laughs> uh, Darkseid said, uh, HBO did greenlight a Targaryen prequel. Yes. Uh, That's true. And then a dull moment says Sopranos ended perfectly. Oh, sure. Does he mean that or is he just being facetious? I don't know. Movies are easy to end. Shows aren't. I agree with that wholeheartedly because mm-hmm. with the show, presumably you're getting three plus seasons. And so you are spending years with these characters and not just two hours. And so it's like you're so... The <clears throat> the expectation, I think that's where expectation is a very dangerous thing. Mm-hmm. The expectation of what you're building it up to be is it's never you can never as a showrunner 
you're never going to be able to meet that expectation. Well, I think it depends. Or on, rarely will you. I think it depends on like what you're doing with it because um, you know a, a great show is The Leftovers on okay. HBO. Um, at one point, majority of the world disappears. Okay. Just yeah. In the instant, people are dealing with the aftermath. Yeah. It's like, are we ever going to figure out what's going on, what's true, and what's not? And I think the beautiful thing about those kinds of shows is the same thing with like Inception. At the end, did the top fall over? Did it not? It doesn't matter. Right. Because what matters is that Cobb in that moment in Inception believes that what he's seeing is real, and really it doesn't matter. He made a decision. He spun right. it and walked away. Right. He's like, I'm not going to look anymore. Right. I'm leaving my past behind. This is real. These are my kids. Right. And as the viewers, I mean, we're left wondering, but it doesn't really matter. It's right. the same thing with the leftovers. It's like, is there another afterlife or not? Because you hear a story from a character, but only from their perspective, and you don't know if it's real or not. But it doesn't matter. Right. It right. doesn't matter whether or not it's real. And I think that is where things like Lost or things like I was going to bring that up. That's one of my Sopranos. biggest disappointments. It's tough. I would have loved to have seen the studio not get or the network not get involved in that. Yeah. I would have loved to have seen the writer's original three season concept. Yeah. Because the first the the pilot to this day remains one of the best pilots I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Season one is immaculate. Season two was really good, and because of what happened, season three fell apart. But I yeah. would have loved to have seen how they wrapped that in, in three seasons. Yeah. That, that is such a disappointment for Well, me. when you start going the fantastical route, yeah. especially something that's relatively grounded, yes, it's like, you know, leftovers, it's like, people disappeared. Where did they go? Are we going to find out? Right. It's like, Ooh, I don't know. So there's some supernatural stuff with, with losses. So there's an island. There's a smoke monster. There's a polar bear. Right. Like, what's going on? Right. It's like... You either have to explain it or you have to take people in a way that they're not expecting that they're going to enjoy. And that's a real tricky thing to do. It's hard, man. Yeah. But I think, you know, there's plenty of good shows out there that have, you know, ended well. I'm saying that flippantly like I have one in my back I was going to say, pull and one like, out. Yeah. Name one. Um, I, I even like the show Rome. They got their budget cut and they only did two seasons. So they shrunk it yeah. down real quick. I thought that had a pretty good ending, you know. And that's the thing, though. We've talked about this in the past. I, I think the British... I feel like that's a very British model because mm -hmm. they used to only run like the office in, 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 in England only ran for two seasons and yeah. then they had a holiday special. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. In America, we pushed it for nine plus seasons. Jesus. It's just a lot of fucking uh, the same. And it was great. It was mm -hmm. funny. But like what made that so special and it's with Fleabag too and with a lot of these is that you only get so much time and then they go, you know what? We're done. We've explored yeah. this. Let's move on to the next. Let's come up with a new idea. Mm -hmm. And I think that helps these endings get. I think it helps manage expectations. Uh, of course, I'm going for it. Avatar: The Last Airbender. I always talk about that Nickelodeon show. Told in three seasons. You know exactly where it's going right. from the start. We get there you're and, in, and we're out. done. Yeah, and it's beautifully told. Right. It's amazing. So I think I think telling a show, but to me, to Drew's point, actually, uh, I think that tells that. That structures a show more like a movie. Mm -hmm. Three seasons, three, three acts. acts. Yeah, you know, you're you're in like you you have the introduction, you've got the climax, you're yeah. out. That's I hear it. I hear Breaking Bad's fantastic. You know, I've only seen the first season, and I know it's great from there, but yeah. I don't you know haven't really watched anything else. Battlestar Galactica, I thought was a good one. Right. Again, that's an ending where people would be like, oh, I don't know how I feel. No, it's not that bad, but I'm like, I get how someone would be like they didn't like it. Sure. But, yeah. I'm you know, super concerned about Stranger Things. I haven't even watched the third season. Again, it's like season one. In in fucking great, it came out of nowhere too, oh, so and that good. was the thing. Yeah, season two was fantastic. Mm -hmm. Season three was like, okay, I yeah. see we have to heighten. I get it. Yeah, uh, still good, but I okay. Mm -hmm. And then the Duffers have said that this will end probably. This will end in either season four or season five, and I'm <laughs> like, please let it be four. Please I thought, I thought it, it was supposed far. to be only three seasons, Please and I think they four, yeah. they probably kept you know. And it's one of those it. with yeah, I'm sure it got the buzz, and so yeah. But I I think it needs to it needs yeah. to wrap up because I just don't. That's one of those shows that it it falls into its own trap because yeah. it's constantly having to crawl out of its own shadow. No yeah. pun intended with the shadow that's monster, tough. but like it's so it gets it it has made itself so big. Well, then you start getting to situations where you're like these same people. Keep going through this. Is no one going to do anything <laughs> about this? Government? Anybody? You can't cover this shit up, right. man. Why like, can't we just move out of Hawkins? Yeah, right. right yeah. That someone has right. to do. Like, though, that, that's where you start losing a little bit as things are going on. Where you're like, hey, I know we're kind of grounded here, but we're because really, that's what's so great about the first season is right. high stakes. <laughs> 
nostalgia out the ass. Oh, yeah. You know, very well done, filmed and everything. And it's like you tell that story. And you haven't seen a show like that. You've seen movies like and that, but not a And that show. could have ended right there at that season, and I would have been fine. Done. I've been like, I was always like, oh, what happened to Eleven? Right. But and you see the ego, and you're like, ah! And then that's <coughs> it's just like, don't answer it. And it's like, yeah. it was good. When they did season two, I was like, okay. Right. And at that one, I was like, that's okay. Right. It's all right. You know, it's it was losing. Again, it's like, how do you top that? And it's it's tough. Yeah. It's tough when you make it's something so great. Very fucking tough. But again, for me, it's it's a lot of st- storytelling is incredibly difficult. But at the same time, um, I don't know. I've never been in that situation. I can't sit there and be like, man, what's it like to have fucking executives up your butt? <sighs> right. Having fans who now write extensive fan theories and right. have expectations or are looking for leaks and stuff like that. And, and also you've got people at that at that point probably just throwing bags of cash at you. Oh, and yeah. you're just like, oh, fuck. Like, like, how do you? Yeah, it's like, right. yeah. There's So I, I, I definitely, I'm still pretty hard on Game of Thrones just because... I find it funny that those guys, you know, again, allegedly were like, we're going to go do Star Wars, so let's get this done. And right. then they got fired from Star Wars. Right. So, but it, it, that's an example, too. Of, I don't feel like those guys did the, the, the material the right, they didn't give it the right service that, that, it, does, that, that it needed. Right. right. And, and it told, the story felt that way. Right. It felt that in a long way. And I think, um, you know, I don't, but I've never been in a situation where I've had to write this and have that pressure and have your budget get extended because it's like, it's got to be bigger. Right. Whereas like the first season, it's like bare bones, even though this is a, right. you know, a period piece of some sort, you know. It, Which sometimes is the best, like it, like uh, necessity is the mother of invention, right? Like sometimes you, you put those restrictions and you're like, all right, this is what we have. You and Let's Drew talk about that all the time, about yeah. the medium sized budget, yeah. you know, of stuff like that. But things like District 9, right. it's one of the best sci-fi movies ever. Fantastic. $35 million was its budget. And it looks fantastic. Right. Deadpool, $65 million budget. Like, amazing. Right. They pulled off great stuff with $65 million. Right. Which, again, is, it's no small it's no small amount, but it's no. not $300 million. No, you know? it's not your, your major blockbuster sort of stuff. They right. were like, hey, look, oh, you're doing a superhero movie? Here's $65 million, which comparatively is right. dog shit compared that, to everything else. That is a high, that is a high-end action movie of the 90s. Exactly. You know, like, that is that, that was a big budget of the 90s. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and so to, to, like you said, people get super creative with what they can do. And I I think that's the stuff that shows. There was a movie I've been trying to remember what it's called, but way back, Drew actually suggested this to me way back. Deep Throat. Yes. Um, And it was about, I think it's called Low, like L O. Or Po P O. It was essentially super. Maybe he can chime in. Super low budget. It's about a guy who um, was dating a girl and the girl got attacked by a demon okay. and taken away to hell. And he basically summons a demon so he could get her back. You could tell this was probably shot one location. Yeah, it, The guy is just sitting in a circle. Only the circle is lit. So everything else around him is dark. And you see like these different, like it was very, I like the story of it. I, I would love to watch it again. Yeah. Because so I you watched did watch it. it yeah. Oh yeah. I, Drew, Drew recommended it and I watched it. And I was, he said, you know, obviously they were working with a, they were very creative what they were doing right. with their budget. And it was, it, I, I, I still, it still resonates with me to this day of what it was and what they were able to do with what they had. Yeah. It was very creative on how they told the story. Yeah. I always find that fascinating when someone can find a unique way to tell a story, which is why things like, can we recast the dead? Can right. we, what can we really do with 3D? Does, what can, yeah. can we push the boundaries of storytelling in a way that's going to make it interesting? Can we do something for a while if someone was doing something with VR you know, or trying to experiment right, right, right. with it? I'm like, I'm, I'm all for it as long as it's not a gimmick. That's the, that, and that's the hard, it's really hard to read that line. Yeah, because I want to see it. I mean... I'm always fascinated by different premises and stuff like that. I mean, you're sending me these writing prompts. The one you sent me the other day was amazing. Oh, for the uh, kid graphic oh, novel? Oh, it was so I good. I'm going to pull that out because oh. I, I, I saw that. I sent it to Doug, and I was like, this would make a great uh, children's graphic novel or like a gateway graphic, like to get them into the world of graphic It sounds novels. like something I would have read. <clears throat> yeah, well, I, I immediately I thought like, of you on this Like one. yesterday, I would have read a story that was based around this. Right, exactly. Um, of course, the internet down here is just terrible. So it goes, a monster under the bed and a monster in the closet, both long since retired, return to visit their former nemesis, a teddy bear. They have tea, and the bear tells them about the new generation of monsters he's been dealing with and about how he misses the old days. Yeah. 
That's like, brilliant. Or, yeah, it's like just so amazing yeah. to think about. Well, it's kind of like Monsters, Inc. in a way. Yeah. Where they're like, kids don't scare as easy these days. Right. You know, it's like, how amazing would it be just to explore that? Right. And how creative. And it, you could do that probably relatively simply, you oh, know, with God, that yeah. sort of stuff. Yeah. And I think that'd be so much fun. Like, the, you, there's creative ideas. Now let's think of a creative way to tell the story. Like, right. what, um, you know, I didn't do it, but with Netflix uh, and uh, Black Mirror, what they did with... Um, Bandersnatch. Bandersnatch. It's like, cool, you're going to live out this thing online with this with this person sure. as yeah. they're creating this game, and based on what you do and you choose is going to affect the outcome. It's choose your own adventure, like, hyper-realized. I'm yeah. like, what a great experience. Sure, absolutely. That you can spend yeah. hours doing, Yeah, which absolutely. is crazy. I still need to watch it. But Same. Yeah. Uh, well, you never. I thought you watched it. No, you've watched the, the regular Black Mirror. Yeah, I haven't done that yet. episode. Yeah. Um, Jared said, Consider, considering the change to Sonic cost thirty five million dollars, oh. and again, it's one of those where the studio. You know, when you're, I don't know if you, when you're playing poker and you're, you hit a point, and you're like, well, I'm, I'm pot committed at this point. <laughs> I, I have to go all in because it just doesn't make sense for me not to. Yeah. This is how I look at Sonic. Yeah. Where they're just like, well, okay, thirty five more million because. You know, it's going to come out. We can't not release it. It's done. Someone's like, the odds of us making our money back are still pretty decent. Nostalgia. It's going to be a dog shit movie. Yeah. Regardless of the correct... The, the corrections look low, light years better. Yeah. Have you seen the new trailer? I, I've seen stills from it, and I, that was good enough for oh, me. Oh, it looks so much better. Yeah. But it still looks like dog shit. Yeah. Um, they uh, also Jared said I look forward to Bojack Horseman and Schitt's Creek ending mm-hmm. uh, they seem to know what they're doing and uh, dull moments that agreed on Bojack have you watched Bojack Horseman I watched the first two episodes and it just didn't do anything for me really yeah I was like I, I, I just it's one of those where I feel like it's an adult swim one right uh, no it's a Netflix it's Netflix original. Mm-hmm. get out of here no. it's got an adult swim feel oh yeah and I always struggled with adult swim stuff yeah those were hit or miss with me yeah. like Aqua Teen Hunger Force for some reason just I love that, that show that one resonated I don't know why right. because when I look back I'm like this is weird as shit right. but I, I liked it in college Squidbillies never no nah, one never worked for me never worked, yeah yeah there were some really weird ones where right. I was like uh, no. super alt comedy yeah I was oh, like what oh what was the oh there was one that was about like a half bird half man Griffin, oh god, it was fucking. It's one of those where I I watched it and it was, you know the the glitches in video games. Yeah. I was talking about make me feel yes, very uncomfortable. I know what you're talking. I would about. watch it and go, I don't like this. Yeah, something about this is uneasy. Yeah, there's yeah. Met- Metalocalypse. Um, <laughs> Which actually, that one was was that, that one had the band um, uh, Death. No, uh, what was her name? I can't remember. That one wasn't bad though because because I actually liked them as a metal band. Yeah, I was like, oh, these guys are legit. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, the, the, there was a, yeah, Bojack just never really rang a bell for me because I also didn't like Bojack. Uh, it's not Harvey Birdman, Attorney at Law. No, but uh, I I do remember that one. But this was another one that was even. I know what you was mean. It was like really fucked up. It was, it was, was all like, CG. Yeah, I was like, it, it was, was like a computer. It was like yeah. late '90s CG yeah, sort of level yeah. thing, and it was really weird. Um, uh, Jared says Bojack uh, seems silly in the first few episodes, then it starts to get deep. I've um, heard that. About I have it. heard that too. So like, I feel like I want to. I've actually seen some like motivational memes made off of BoJack Horseman that I'm like, is that really mm-hmm. from this? Because kudos to that. <laughs> that's yeah. legitimately is deep. Yeah. Oh, dull moment says BoJack is an asshole. And that's the point. Yeah, that's yeah. I okay. had a hard time dealing with him because his, remember back when we were watching Mad Men and yeah. Drew said this years ago. He's like, I have a hard time rooting for this guy. Right, because he just destructs self He's just not good. Yeah. And that's the thing is like I have a hard time like I was watching the animated version of Castlevania. Sure. And Simon Belmont was the same fucking way through the whole like first season. I'm like, I'm not gonna watch this guy be a fucking dick. Yeah. I was like, he's not heroic at all. Now I get it. You don't have to be goody two shoes, but this guy was like a drunk and he's like, I don't want to do anything. Everyone hates the Belmont clan. I'm like, yeah. why would I root for this guy? It's like, well, if you wait until season four, there's a big turn. I'm like, I don't want to wait that long right, right. for this sort of shit. Like, I, I, ugh. I'm like, this is the guy I got to root for right now? Yeah. I'm like, no, fuck that shit. Right. Fuck that shit. Tell me how you feel about it, though, Doug. Ah, you know, the anti heroes are fine in a lot of ways, but it's just, I don't know, man. There's some situations where I'm like, I don't have the, the patience for this. Yeah, it's always, it, it, yeah. I, if you have to, <laughs> I, I'll give, uh, I always give three episodes. Mm-hmm. Be, like, for, for, if I'm watching something, I, or at least I, I try my damnedest to do that because I know that I'm like, okay, like the first one is 
a ton of explaining, a ton of, and I even heard that about the the Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. Was like the first episode moves very slowly, but again, it's because except for the ending, I've heard there's an epic gunfight at the end. I thought it moved just fine. Did you? I I had no problem with the pacing whatsoever. I was engaged the whole time. I thought it was great. So, but I've heard like so I, well, I had heard some people then say that it moves slowly, but again, it's they were saying. Expected because you're setting up a world. They're well, setting up a, like this entire you, like even though it's known through Star Wars, you're still you still have to introduce a metric fuck ton of characters, and you've really got to you got to get people up to speed. You got to hit the ground running. And I, I felt with that, if it was maybe an hour instead of forty minutes, I maybe would have felt that way. But I feel like it ended. I was like, man, that was only forty minutes. Okay. Yeah. I was like, can't wait for the see the next one. They left me wanting more. So that's good. Then as the epic gunfight does. Yeah. From what I understand. Yeah, I mean, that I was good. I mean, the intro to The Mandalorian was fucking great. That guy barely says hardly any lines. Really? It was the best part. Like, he just, right out of the gate, you know, the intro to it is fantastic. Yeah. I mean, with, you know, <laughs> it sets up who he is right away, beating some ass and stuff like that. Yeah. He doesn't say much. He's so fucking sinister. Yeah. This guy's trying to buy his way out because he got bounty on him and stuff like that. And he's like, hey, I have lots of credits. And he just, you know, st- he stares at him. He's like, ah. Mandalorian, huh? Is it true what they say that you guys never take your helmets off? And he just stares at him. He's just like, hey, uh, he just like throws down this thing. It shows like his face is wanted. He's like, all right, look, I, I've got a lot of credits. I got a lot. He goes, I can either bring you in hot or he's like, I can bring you in warm. And he pulls this thing back and taps his gun. He goes, or I can bring you in cold. And that's like, that is a great, that is it. And yeah. then like, he just doesn't say anything to him the rest of the time. Yeah. Like you start learning. He doesn't like droids and you don't know why. But like, he goes to get a transport and this thing comes up with droid driven. He's like, no dro- no droids. He's like, all right. It's like, why doesn't he like droids? He sees another one. He's like, ah, droids. I'm like, what happened with you and droids? It's like, <laughs> tell I, me more. Tell I me more. Know more. And then it's just like this whole intense sequence. This guy's just talking because he's nervous and he yeah. got busted and everything. And he's just like, how about, about? and the, the Mandalorian doesn't say jack shit. And he's like, all right, well, I'm going to go use the bathroom and I'm spoiling some stuff. So fuck you guys. But I love you. But fuck he loves you. you. Yeah. It's like this guy's going down. He's trying to find a way to get out of the ship. And uh, as he's looking around for stuff, he sees like all these other guys that have been frozen in carbonite. And he's like, ah. he's kind of like talking. He's like, yeah, I was hoping I'd get home for this festival. And uh, he's looking out and he kind of pauses. And he's like, I'm not sure if uh, that's going to happen. And then it cuts and the Mandalorian's right there. He's like, yeah. Probably not. And then it's just like, pff, that's, yeah. <laughs> guy gets frozen in carbonite and like, you know. Well, it's an always, it's those, those are my favorite kind of intimidating characters where and I think uh, Michael, uh, Michael Shannon played one in, oh. is it the Iceman? The Ice I was Man, like, the pick Iceman one, Cometh? pick a yeah. movie. He's but just like, intense. It's one of those where there's no, did, did you ever see that one? No. Yeah. I know what he plays the uh, Iceman killer. Yeah. But he, yeah, but it was the, the scene with James Franco where James Franco was just begging and pleading for his life and don't, you don't have to and I can this and this and this. And nothing, you just know, nothing he says is going to stop it. Mm-hmm. This is inevitable, and it's going to happen. Yeah. And it like those those characters where there is just no bargaining are just fucking terrifying. Well, I love it because I watched recently uh, the newest Hot Ones with Nick Offerman. Okay, yeah. Which was great. And I didn't realize he used to be a bouncer. Uh, what? Yeah. Ah! And he was getting asked questions about being a bouncer. Like, what tactics do you take? And, and Nick Offerman said he found that if you're quiet as a bouncer people don't know how to read you. So they think that you're just oddly calm. So you, they shouldn't fuck with you. Whereas if you're boisterous or whatever, you're trying to overcompensate. Yeah. So he would always just be very quiet and very like reserved. And people are like, don't fuck with that guy. He's quiet. I feel like that's who he is, (laughs) which is why I've always been like, this guy is just like, he must know a lot. Like you you start to, because I think that's what it is, is better to, I think what's the phrase better to, um, Better to keep your mouth shut and let everyone think you're a fool than open it and prove them right. Better to die a hero than live to see yourself become the villain. Exactly, yeah. yeah. But like, basically, the less you say, people start projecting what they exactly. assume onto you. And it's just like, okay, you can... All right, like yeah. my brother's tactic in Eve, radio silence. There it is, yeah. They're mad, they talk shit, and they start to wonder if you're human if you don't <laughs> respond. And it's a horrifying psychological effect. Absolutely, And yeah. the Mandalorian has that. They're like, uh... Why is he, he not saying anything? He ain't saying shit. Right. And he's just like very, like people are terrified. of. Him. I've have I've had managers who have used that tactic where they sit and they'll just let you talk. Mm-hmm. And then the more you talk, the more you get yourself into, I mean, police, like it's a very well-known tactic, but it's a very effective tactic mm-hmm. where you just let the person go. Yeah. And eventually they talk themselves into a corner. Yeah. Or they 
they you know they lose sight of what they're actually doing. Is mm-hmm. it, it? They basically just there's that scene in, themselves in Iron Man two uh, where uh, what's his name is uh, uh, Hammer is 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 trying to uh, get all that stuff for Don Cheadle's character, yes, and he's yes, like, yes. "You want this? I got you. It's too downtown for you. How about this? How about this? Blah blah blah." He's like, "Give him all the stuff," and Don Cheadle just stares at him. He's like. And then he's like, dude, you got to give me something. You're, you're like a sphinx over here. I don't know what to say. I don't know what you want. Right. Like, he's like, help me out here. It's like, a great negoti- negotiating yeah. tactic. Just, yeah. Just straight face, just yeah. staring at him. I was like, oh, my God. That tactic works really, really well. Uh, there's one time where it worked hmm. really well for me. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh-huh. Like I was, it was, I was in this really, I found myself randomly in this mm-hmm. really big arena. Ooh. Yeah. And there was like people chanting and everything. There was one section that there was no one there. Kumate. Kumate. Right, exactly. You were in Thailand. Uh, I was in Thailand. Uh, sand pit, snakes around it, mm-hmm. rings of fire, mm-hmm. just bursting out of nowhere. And uh, this guy was really trying to intimidate me. I think he wanted to kill me, and I just stood there. And I, I let him, I let him talk his shit and this and that. And he got too close, and then throw down. <laughs> Gonna leave it with the sound effect. I was gonna be like, Kumite, what's that mean? Throw down! Oh, that would have been a good one too. But it's a throw down! Um, a lot of talk on Twitch about Bojack Horseman. So <laughs> I, I'm just, I've kind of. Jared. Hey, that's what we're here for. We're here to stir up the community and Jared it's a community and spot. Drew, uh, really, I think they've, they've made a connection on this show. So nice. uh, kudos to them for, for making their connection. Come I, hang out with us on Twitch and uh, find a new friend. It. <laughs> It it's it might be those, Drew. It might not. Who knows? It's one of those where now that I'm reading this, I'm like, well, I kind of want to watch it. Like, what are they talking about? Like, yeah. Jared just goes, "I hope they don't end it with suicide. That would be a sh- <laughs> that would be a shit ending." And then oh, Drew man. goes, "I don't think they will. At least I hope not." Which I'm just like, "How do you from a cartoon? How do you get there? Like, now I want to see this." Yeah. You know, you know, it would be a great ending for this podcast. The final episode is Doug and Justin in an arena. The <laughs> ultimate throwdown. <laughs> <laughs> Jared, uh, that would be great. Spoiler alert: This podcast is never going to end. So <laughs> there's that. Ta-da. So today's throwdown, um, in honor of Netflix and their never-ending spewing of content, mm-hmm. uh, they've got a new one that's uh, coming out in theaters and it's going to drop on Netflix on the 27th. Mm. Uh, and I thought it'd be fun to do a throwdown based off that. Cool. The little movie called The Irishman. Ah. <laughs> it could not have been better. Ah, ah! <laughs> Doug, Doug left. He's, that, ah, cool. He's I'm not done. a fan of this. Yeah, I'm out. So let me start by saying, do you have any interest in seeing this movie? Um, I think so. Um, that's not a glowing, not mean, a glowing endorsement. I mean, I guess. I think so. I guess it's about what the 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 Gaudis? Is that what it's about? It's about uh, Jimmy Hoffa. That's the same thing. Yep. Hoffa. Jimmy Hoffa and uh, the guy that Hoffa kind of hired as muscle. Gotcha. I mean, it's Scorsese, so Ooh, I mean, the real guy. Uh, he got says he knows what Pacino and and the Nairo in it. So right, exactly. That'll be interesting. And Pet Pesci, I think is. The oh, is he in that too? Pesci's in it. Yeah. Okay. So interesting. in that, with that, thank you for the lead-in. Mm-hmm. Uh, today's throwdown is going to be in their heyday: Al Pacino versus Joe Pesci versus Robert De Niro. Oh man, we got to do a three-way three-way throwdown. Man. Yep. Um, now here's the thing. To what we were just talking about, I feel like De Niro, De Niro his approach would be that that silent, I'm going to get in your head, stare down. Because he, do, he does that so well in movies. So I feel like he's, if, we, if we're going to play those uh, the archetypes out, he's the, he's the strong silent type. Uh, De Niro is the uh, motor mouth. Or, sorry, um, Pesci? Pacino is the motor mouth. And Pesci is the firecracker that you mm. don't know where it's coming from. Yeah, it's hard to. I mean, yeah, because I'm thinking of like all the roles. Like Pesci has obviously played those characters that are just like loud mouth, right? You know, whatever. But you know, but can, he's. I mean, he he always takes that. He somehow he always finds himself with a baseball bat and he's beating the shit out of someone, or stuffing them in a trunk, uh, or getting the shit kicked out of them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, generally his stories buried in the desert. His stories generally yeah. don't end well in in those kinds of right, situations. Yeah. He either buried in the desert know. or double tap in the back of the head because. Yeah. He, Hit a made man, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and Pacino's definitely the, you motherfucker. Right. Come over here, you motherfucker. You know, like however he does in uh, Glengarry Glen Ross, where he's like, you piece of shit. Oh, that's right. 
<laughs> you fucking cunt. <laughs> you fucking cunt. You child. <laughs> you think you can work with men? <laughs> I'm just... going down to Limpkin. <laughs> I'm going downtown, asshole. <laughs> oh, I'm going to have your job, shithead. <laughs> like that intense, yeah. like, oh, man. Yeah. Then you've got, like, Devil's Advocate where he's like, the woman's neck is a border town. <laughs> Like what? He's so insane. <laughs> he's like he's like the slightly more sane Nicholas Cage. That's what I was gonna say. Like he's a much more successful Nicholas Cage. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Yeah. Some of his lines are bananas. Or, the, the, my favorite one was from him from Heat, where this guy is like, "Oh man, why did I get myself in it? Because she's got a great ass." <laughs> Great like, line. What? And like, even the guy's like, I think that was wasn't acting. He's just right. like, why did you just shout that at me? <laughs> Give me what you got! Give me what you got! I'm like, Jesus Christ, dude. <laughs> Pull it back. Pull it back. I love it. Um so I guess like uh I mean, if we're look if we're thinking like action level, I think I've seen more out of De Niro than I've seen out of anybody else. I mean, because you had uh, Raging Bull. Raging Bull. Cap you had uh, Taxi Driver. <laughs> Captain Taxi Driver. <laughs> I was gonna say uh, Cab Driver. I'm like, that's not it. Um, you know, he was Captain Taxi. He driver. he was pretty. Uh, I mean, he he did kill some folks in Godfather. You know, um, uh, Pacino just seems more like vocally intimidating. Like I could see him like getting through to someone, like berating them, and uh, maybe affecting them in a way to make them lose their confidence. Sure. I could see Pesci getting someone on tilt, but I don't know if Pesci has what it takes to to back it up. Sure, so I think okay. Pesci would definitely lose. See, I don't know. See, I think Pesci Pesci is that fucking again, I think he's a, he's a stick of TNT. Yeah. I really think he's And what happens? TNT explodes. Right all it over takes, someone. It takes someone with him, but right. he's not surviving it either. <laughs> so I could see him like, especially in a three-way throwdown. Like he's not making it out. Okay, like he he will do something where he he would figure it's like if he's going, he's taking someone with him, sure. and that's a victory for him. That actually, I'll give you that one hundred percent. Yeah. And I feel like Pacino's going to be the guy that's going to like push him to that point because he's the kind of guy that's like you cunt, right? You piece of shit. Like he's going to do that stuff, and Pesci's going to be like, "What do you want from me, man?" <laughs> that's how it goes. This right? is my favorite part of the podcast is right it? now. You you think I'm funny, huh? Huh? Oh, I make you laugh? Huh? Oh, I make you laugh? Huh? Oh, no, 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 let, let him talk, let him talk. Am I, I amuse you? I amuse you like a clown? No, Nick, that's not what I meant at all, Nick. Oh, I, hey, 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 let Nick, him talk. That, yeah. How am I funny? <laughs> Did you, was it Mickey versus Gollum? <laughs> no, that just turned to Mickey when he's like, he's like, it's getting serious. Right. Have you ever seen that Reddit, the I'm sorry, John Reddit? No. It's where, basically, it's people who make Garfield a nightmarish terror <gasps> oh, to John. Oh, yeah, I've so seen that. I feel like that's Mickey's version of that. He yeah. just went there. Yeah, yeah that, those are terrifying. It's, I'm sorry, Walt. So I think um, I, I think De Niro is the one that's packing the punch. Yeah. He's packing the heat. He's, He's as, got the... As, as Pesci and De Niro, or as Pesci and Pacino are going at each other, De Niro just reaches into his inside jacket pocket and pulls out brass knuckles. Yeah. And is like, here we go. Because like Pacino's trying to do it, and they're trying to get him, but he just sits there and stares at yeah. him, and they don't see it, and then they're antagonizing each other. So as it's going down, he just waits for the right moment. Right. And just not unlike himself in The Godfather Part Two, he waits for the perfect way to essentially annihilate his, his competition, and that's how he takes him out. I absolutely, I think it's, again, it goes right back to that. That's the strong silence. Mm -hmm. They're, they're going to get they're, they're gonna get in your fucking head. Yeah. You don't know what they're going to do, and mm -hmm. then look out when they yeah. do it. Look out. So, De Niro for the win! Do, 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 do. <laughs> that is the end of the throwdown. Thank you for listening. Uh, <laughs> I'm just reading some of the... The people are doing our throwdown right now on <laughs> Twitch. <laughs> Uh, so, <laughs> this is fantastic. We might just uh, need to go another couple minutes to, to go. So, um, where are we here? Uh, Drew says they're saving that for the last episode ever. Only one of them can live. Uh, Darkseid said, I need one more with the winner solo hosting. <laughs> and Jared goes, my money's on uh, Doug the Giant, unless Justin the Scrappy is hiding that shiv he made. <laughs> and then Jared goes, oh man, you guys made me miss the chance to talk about Nicolas Cage playing Nicolas Cage in that new movie. <laughs> That's right. And then a dull moment goes, it will be interesting. Doug will talk a lot about nothing. Justin will be happy to keep the conversation going as he slides the shiv into Doug's rib cage. <laughs> into Doug's rib cage. <laughs> <laughs> and then Jared goes, Justin might win with that sneaky tactic, but he's not leaving without some broken bones and maybe a concussion. <laughs> I love and everything the, about this And the last this thing right I now. say as I die is I'm like, poop.
Dot <laughs> <laughs> com. Dot com. Throwdown brought to you by Boob. Dot com. Come. And then he'll prance around bragging in his perfect Braveheart accent as Doug dies a slow death <laughs> attempting to replicate the accent, but it's mostly Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is everything right now. Oh I my God. so love You this. guys are the best. Oh my God. Thank you for Thank that. Thank you for making the night, guys. That this was amazing. So you really good. know us. That's you amazing. Re- they get us, Doug. They understand. Oh my God. It's so good. Well, thank you guys for that. That's <laughs> delightful. Shit. Justin, what do you got to recommend this week? Uh, God, man, I don't know. Uh, Disney Plus, rent, get it, <laughs> just get it. Okay, <laughs> rent it. Rent, a, uh, rent Disney Plus go, go for in, two years at five dollars a month. Three ways with some friends and just pay like two bucks a month for there a year. There you go. Um, I, you know, honestly, I'm trying to think uh, what. I t- I've been so busy the last two weeks. I really haven't had a chance to like get into anything new. Yeah. So uh, I got nothing right now. Uh, I've read the, the these, usual shit, I guess. These this comic's called Orphans. Uh, it's pretty interesting. Uh, I've read the two first big volumes of them. It's basically a future where some catastrophic thing happens on Earth, and these kids uh, survive, and they basically are trained to be super soldiers to fight this alien uh, race. It's okay. very uh, Ender's Game ish, but it's very well done. I really enjoyed it, so I can't wait to find the other pieces to it. Are we talking super soldiers like Warhammer 40k super soldiers? Not quite like that, but they're enhanced okay. with like things like that, and they basically are super combat folks, and cool. they're interesting. Uh, would they go through that? It was the Orphans? The Orphans. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, yeah it's, I love going through the library and being like, ah, this looks cool, and yeah. I just grab some. I'm also reading the Nightfall trilogy uh, with Batman. Uh, which is fascinating too. Okay. I'm like, I love it. It's basically Bane and how he sets things going. I'm like, yeah. this is pretty cool. So I'm interested, and in, I'll let you know how that goes. Yeah, absolutely. I will say what I want to what I want to go see is is check out Jojo Rabbit. I yeah, think that's going to be a fucking great that movie. Looks fascinating to me. Um, and and Hank said he enjoyed Doctor Sleep. So oh, that's another one I want to see. That, yeah, just wasn't willing to go to the movie theater yeah. for it. So cool, awesome. Well, gang, thank you so much for listening and to, for, for Twitch as always. It's always a pleasure having you guys here. You you really help the, the the show as we record. So if you want to join us on Twitch, go to twitch.tv slash mindgappodcast. We generally record on Tuesdays around 6.30 Central Time. So definitely come and hang out with us. Join the conversation. Tonight has been a very lively conversation. Yeah, it's been thank fantastic. you. Thank you all for that. It's always a pleasure. Yeah. You guys can also follow us on all our social medias at mindgappodcast. Uh, reach out to us. Chat with us. We love hearing uh, responses from you. Share us around. It's really important. Uh, and Justin also exists digitally as well. Uh, on Instagram and Twitter at Justin underscore Michael spelled M-I-K-E-L it's the fun way of spelling it while you're in the online realm check us out on Apple Podcast on uh, Stitcher on Spotify and on Google Podcast uh, really wherever podcasts are sold you can like us subscribe to us share us around review us rate us all those things the sharing one is humongous for us mm-hmm. uh, so thank you for everyone who has shared um, you know thank you to oh god hold on I'm my gonna do mom. It. I'm going to do my it. My dad. I'm going to do it. My Lyft driver, uh, Raphael. Twitch community for uh, retweeting, uh, yes. uh, push, pushing us out there uh, on um, on Twitter. Uh, Twitch community, again, go follow them. You can see when some cool Twitch streams are, uh, are streaming, what's out there, what's new. I'm thinking we might have picked someone up from that. There's a name on here I don't recognize. So Welcome. Uh, yeah, follow us around, share us. And then uh, 2east8th.com slash mindgap. And uh, just keep an eye on all of Two East Eighth's um, uh, social medias. Uh, we just posted a metric fuck ton. I've said that three times this episode. You sure have. Of uh, stuff from this last weekend's shooting, and it was fucking awesome, and we had a great time. So check it out. Awesome. One quick thing. Uh, if you guys enjoy the fake ads that we do, and you'd have a suggestion, oh, yeah. a topic, a product uh, that you would like us to do a review for, by all means, uh, reach out to us on our social medias and suggest it, and we will do a... Fake ad for it. Absolutely. Did you know they were fake ads? Because they are. You haven't been trying to enter promo codes, have you? Oh, no. Because that's stupid. Someone goes, did you check the sites before you write the dot coms? I'm like, nope. Nope. So good luck yeah. with wherever you Try go. Try the promo code. It might work. I don't Who know. knows? Who knows? But anyway, Justin, thank you. Douglas, thank you. Listeners, thank you. Mm-hmm. Twitchers, thank you. And we will see you all next week. Mind Gap Podcast.